Since Elhatham is a fairly popular character and is getting a rerun during patch 3.7 alongside Kazuha, I wanted to make a video to talk about 5 underrated Elhatham team comps that I think are really fun and that everyone should give a try. Whether uh, you're planning to pull for Elhatham in the future, or whether you have Elhatham right now and you haven't tried one of these team comps yet. Now, I do highly suggest so... that you watch the intro in its entirety because I have a number of version disclaimers to disclose. And I will be leaving the timestamps down in the description. If you're interested in only one single team from the five that I'm going to be showing, then you can go to the description and check the team that you want. I wanted to make a bunch of chapters, have the video divided into different chapters where uh, I list every team. But for some reason, YouTube does not allow for chapters until you have 1,000 subscribers. So I'm not sure why this is a feature, but again, it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to leave the timestamps in the description. You can go and check them out for yourself. Now, the now, first important thing for me to mention, and this is actually quite relevant, so please pay attention, is that yes, my El Haytham is indeed C6, which means compared to a C0 El Haytham, his damage is going to be inflated. That being said, what his C4 and C6 do is that they do not directly provide him with uh, damage that is just flat bonus damage. They What they do is they unlock different rotations and different combos that, El, that a C0 El Haytham does not have access to. And during this video, I will be intentionally avoiding using those rotations in order to keep my El Haytham as authentic as possible. Now, keep in mind, yes, he will be doing more damage than a C0 El Haytham, but I will be playing him as if he was a C0 El Haytham. Something else that is very important to mention is that every single team that I'll be showing, or at least most of them, I'm pretty sure every single one of them, uh, while El Haytham is going to be doing a large portion of the damage, those teams that I'm going to be using are teams where the damage is split between El Haytham and two or three other off-field DPS units who are also going to contribute a lot of damage to the team. And this is very relevant because this way, well, SC6 El Haytham, while he's going to be doing a lot of damage, you can count on the fact that the other three members are also going to be doing a lot of work in the team. The team comp that I normally run on El Haytham, because my El Haytham is C2+, is a raw spread team. So El Haytham, usually what you're going to want to do with him is you're going to want to run him at C0 on one of the two. It's either a spread team, raw spread team, where he's going to be the main carry, uh, or he can have another sub DPS with him, something like Yamiko Official. Or you can run him in a team where he is basically a Hyper Bloom driver, where he is going to be doing a lot of damage, but also enabling Hyper Blooms, with, uh, which will also in turn do a lot of damage. The team that I normally run with El Haytham, and this is a super premium team, is Nahida, uh, Thousand Floating Dreams, and then Baiju, you can run him on either Instructors or uh, Noblesse in order to buff El Haytham even further. That being said, it, during, in these videos, or in this video rather specifically, I will not be showcasing these teams, but rather I will be showcasing five rare team comps that I almost never see, but are very, very good, and you can definitely get 36 stars in the Abyss. In fact, I will be showing for every team my own runs and uh, be clearing the uh, Abyss successfully using those teams. And those teams, as I said, are not only really fun, but they are also objectively very good, and you will easily be able to clear uh, Spiral Abyss with them, the hardest content in the game, and achieve 9 stars as long as you obviously invest well enough in the characters that are, those teams require. And this team is a virgin team that relies primarily on Thoma and El Haytham as the two highest DPS units on the team. Now, I need to say this, I really, really enjoy this team personally. It was the most fun I had while filming this, well, at least recording the Spiral Abyss runs for this video. And it is actually a very fun team, but it does have a number of downsides. And the downsides, well, I'm going to explain why I have three defensive units on this team. And you're probably going to understand when you play it. So, I do have to say this. You can replace Yao Yao with someone like either Nahida or Baiju for bonus damage. Obviously, Baiju is going to be very good on this team. And actually, I would recommend Baiju if you have him. Hopefully that being said, I do objectively think that Yao Yao is better than Baiju just for this team. Now, of course, you can use Baiju. He will be good. But I do think that Yao Yao is better, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, that being said, I need to address Nahida first. You can run Nahida on this team. And you can tell me, okay, so this team has Toma. Toma has a shield. It has Singcho. Singcho has healing, and he reduces the damage that you take. So why do you need to run a healer? Let's say you are a mechanical god. Someone who can... You, you go to uh, Melania and Elden Ring, and you just clap her first try. You go to the Spiral Abyss. You dodge every single attack, you land every single hit, you don't get hit even once. Even if you are a mechanical god in, at the game, you're still going to die while playing this team. And 
the thing the reason I say this is because even if you dodge every single attack, you're going to take so much damage from your own Burgeon, in addition to the fact that while you're attacking with this team in between Dendro Corprox, you're going to be proccing burning, which that damage is damage that you cannot dodge. You cannot dodge the damage of burning and uh, Burgeon. So what's going to happen is while you're fighting, not only are you taking damage from the enemies, and let's say, let's say you don't take damage from the enemies, you're going to be killing yourself just through the Burning and, and uh, Burgeon. So, believe me when I tell you, yes, Nahida, you can't run her, you can't clear with her, but it is a lot more painful than running someone like either Baiju or Yao Yao, and I personally prefer Yao Yao in this team. So, let me talk about the other two units. While you're playing this team, you're going to get burning procs on the enemies. And in order to extinguish that burning, you need a hydro character that not only will allow you to proc blooms, but also has enough hydro application to extinguish the burning so that you can immediately proc another set of blooms in order to blast with Burgeon. And the best character that I found for this is going to be Singcho. Now, obviously, you can uh, replace Singcho with someone like Yelan. That being said, I do think that Singcho's defensive utility in this team is very valuable, not only because he provides you with off-field damage and a lot of Hydro application, but also this guy heals you and he provides damage reduction, which, believe me, you will need the healing. You take so much... This team is very fun, but you take so much damage just from the your own like characters. And the other uh, units that I want to talk about is going to be Yao Yao. Uh, the reason I recommend Yao Yao on this team is not only because she's a 4-star, which means she's easier to obtain than Baiju, but also because Yao Yao, uh, if you're someone who has Olhaitem, then the only way you got Olhaitem was by pulling on him during patch 3.4, and on his banner, Yao Yao was one of the featured 4-stars, which means if you have Baiju, chances are you probably have Yao Yao. In addition to the fact that Yao Yao was given for free during the previous Lantern Rite event, which means a lot of people already picked Yao Yao as, a, as their free character, and Yao Yao herself is a very good healer. Let's say you replace Yao Yao with someone like Baiju. You're gonna say Baiju provides more damage, right? But you have to remember that Baiju's, the way Baiju provides more damage is he provides you with his uh, passive, second ascension passive, will provide you with bonus reaction damage that is around Dendro. And this is good if the on-field character who has Baiju's shield is going to be doing the reaction damage. Now again, El Haytham, he will be doing the react he will be doing a lot of personal damage on his own in this team, but the uh, main reaction damage that you're going to be getting is going to be from Toma. And Toma is not going to be on field. In other words, Toma is not going to receive the buff from Baiju. So yes, Baiju does work. That being said, I do think that Yao Yao is better in this team because she will provide El Haytham uh, through her C1 with 15 Dendro damage bonus, in addition to being able to reduce uh, Dendro resistance on enemies through Deep Wood, in addition to being a very good healer on her own. So this next team that I want to talk about is a very good team uh, composition when you're fighting AoE situations, and it revolves around Dori, Kazuha, Nahida, and El Haytham. So I should say that this team is probably a not a very flexible team. You do need these four characters for it to function properly. Now you can replace Dory with someone like, let's say, Kuki Shinobu, right? That being said, I highly do not recommend this because what Dory provides you in this team is extremely valuable. Since characters like El Haytham and Nahida have so much Dendro application, Kazuha will not be able to scroll Electra consistently. But what Dory does is, through her ult, she provides Kazuha with self electro infusion, which means now your Kazuha can essentially group enemies, uh, plunge, and then ult. And when he ults, he's going to swirl the electro element, but he's going to swirl electro from himself and not from the enemies who are likely going to have dendro application from Nahida on top of them. And uh, during, while you're playing this team, I highly recommend that you build your Kazuha as a crit carry. Now, I do have to say, you do not have to build him for crit, you can go EM, and EM Kazuha still does a lot of damage. That being said, in this team specifically, uh, you're not really going to rely on Kazuha's elemental mastery to boost uh, Electro, because Dory herself does not have that much damage. Now, you can build her for damage in this team, that being said, my Dory is only level 70, and uh, she, her artifacts are really bad. I do have to say, Dory, the, one of the advantages of this team is that Dory herself does not need 
any investment at all. You just level up her ult, you give her a lot of energy recharge, and then you give her something like Noblesse Oblige or Instructors in order to provide Elemental Mastery for the team, and she'll be able to function pretty pretty well with very little investment. For weapons, you can honestly just give her something like uh, Sacrificial Greatsword or Favonius for bonus uh, energy recharge. Again, the important thing about this team is for Dory to have her ultimate up because you want to infuse Kazuha, so infuse him with Electro and have him do all, uh, all the Electro application on his own. And the nice thing about this team, and the funny thing actually about this team, is that I find myself in situations where Kazuha, Nahida, and Dory would basically just dispose of all the garbage AoE waves uh, before I even had the chance to swap into Alhatham, which is not only really fun, but it proves that this team is extremely good and very viable. Again, this is a very good team in AoE. It does have some uh, single target uh, applications, but it will perform much better in AoE. So this next team that I want to talk about is basically a national variation or international variation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the Shangling team, but instead you have Elhatham as the driver. Again, extremely good team. I don't think there is much to say about this team. I don't see many people using it, but it is very, very good if you want to run it. Now, on this team, you can run Elhatham on uh, Deepwood Memories instead of running him on an offensive set like, uh, let's say, Gilded Dreams. Uh, Gilded Dreams can work. I did play Elhatham in this team using Gilded Dreams. That being said, I'm pretty sure uh, Deepwood Memories is going to be better because of the Dendro Shred on the set, 4-piece. Uh, but, alas, these, this team basically takes advantage of four really good broken and top tier characters. Uh, that being Bennett, Shangling, Singcho, and El Haytham. Uh, what's going to happen here is, not only are you going to be vaporizing Shangling's uh, ult, uh, her Pyronado, through uh, vaping the Hydro application from Singcho, but also you have El Haytham and Singcho, they're going to be proccing blooms. And now I need to talk about uh, Shangling's sands, because this is going to be important. Now, for Shang Ling, it, it is very important to run her or, or to meet her energy recharge requirements. If you cannot ult with Shang Ling on cooldown, then yes, it is highly recommended to run an ER Sands. That being said, if you are able to reach an amount of energy recharge that is sufficient enough in order to uh, ult on cooldown, uh, obviously this uh, you can achieve that easily if you run her with the catch in addition to running her with the uh, Emblem of the Severed Fate and having some energy on your uh, substats. If you are able to achieve Shang Ling's energy recharge requirements, then I highly recommend that you run an Elemental Mastery Sands over an Attack Sands. Now, normally an Elemental Mastery Sands is going to be better, a little bit better than an Attack Sands on Shang Ling, not only because you're getting a lot of attack from Bennett, but because vaporizing on Shang Ling is very important because that way you're going to be boosting Shang Ling's Pyronado by a lot. In addition to the fact that in this team specifically, what Chang Ling is doing is not just vaporizing uh, her ult, but she's also going to be triggering Virgin by exploding all the Dendro cores that El Haytham and Singtro are going to be creating. So now what's going to happen is not only is Chang Ling doing transformative uh, reaction through Virgin, but she's also doing uh, amplifying reaction by vaporizing her own ult. Again, this is a very simple team, very simple concept, extremely good, and does a lot of damage. The now, fourth team that I want to talk about is, in my opinion, one of the best teams in this video. So, this team is good for so many reasons, let me break it down. First of all, this is a spread slash aggravate team. Which, in other words, means Al Haytham is in his ballpark, this is his hometown. Al Haytham is a spread DPS and a very good spread DPS at that. And now you're utilizing his spread potential to its full extent. You have Fischl and Beidou. Two extremely good off-field DPS units, in addition to the fact that Fischl provides a lot of energy for Beidou. So I do have to say, in this team, you can replace Fischl with someone like Kuki and then replace Yao Yao with someone like Nahida. That being said, the amount of energy recharge that Fischl provides to Beidou is very valuable, since Beidou is a very good unit, but also Beidou needs a support to give her energy, because Beidou is an energy-hungry unit for good reason, her ult does a lot of damage. Uh, now, I do have to say, for a fourth slot, you can run a Dendro fourth character just to apply Deepwood Memories in order to boost El Haytham's damage. Ideally, that uh, fourth Dendro character would be either Yao Yao or Baiju. Now, in this team, Baiju is probably objectively better than Yao Yao since El Haytham can utilize uh, Baiju's second ascension talent to its full extent since what Baiju's second ascension talent does is it, it boosts the Dendro reaction damage of the on-field character that has Baiju's ult on him. And El Haytham is going to be on field, he's going to be proccing spread, and he's going to do a lot more spread damage with Baiju. That being said, 
I'm going to be using uh, Yao Yao in this video. And the reason I'm going to do that is two main reasons. The first reason is because this video is not actually about top 5 underrated El Hitam teams. This video is actually Yao Yao propaganda. Please play Yao Yao. She is our queen. Yao Yao is adorable and everyone needs to play Yao Yao. And the other reason is because uh, Yao Yao is a 4 star. More people have her than they do Baiju. In addition to the fact that because my El Hitam is C6, I do not want to inflate his damage more than already more than it's already going to be inflated. Well, I do. Well, actually, this is not really true. Uh, Fischl and Beidou are extremely good five st uh, four stars. They are practically just five star units cosplaying as four stars. But regardless, more people have them because they are easy to access. They are really old characters. If you're playing Genshin for at least a year, you probably have one or more copies of both of them. And yeah, this team is super cheap to build, very easy to play, and extremely, extremely effective, and it does a lot of damage. Now, I do have to say this before I finish talking about this team. When you're watching the uh, the showcase that I'm uh, going to be filming for the combat, or the Spiral Abyss clear, my Beidou is really bad. Her artifacts are hot garbage. Now, I, I didn't intentionally make her artifacts hot garbage. Unfortunately, I've been farming Emblem of the Severed Fate for years, and... Uh, I never got any, like, like, I couldn't get any good pieces for Beto herself. All my, all of my good emblem pieces are on Raiden Shogun. And yeah, I just, it's just get lucky forehead, get better artifacts. But yeah, if your Beto has better artifacts than mine, she's going to be doing way more damage. And this team's damage is split between primarily El Haytham, and then you have Beto, and then you have Fischl doing some damage on the side. Now, obviously, Fischl's damage is a lot, but it's not going to be as much as El Haytham and Beto. And, of course, Beidou is going to be doing a lot more damage in an AoE situation, but the team itself is still very good in single target. One. The fifth and final team that I will be showcasing is this El Haytham slash Candice uh, Hyper Bloom team. And this team is one that I think is very underrated, because Candice, in this team, you're going to build her as an off-field DPS. Now, I do have to mention this. Uh, this team does not work unless you have C6 Candice, so if you do not, I apologize, this team will simply not work. But if you do, if you do have El Haytham and C6 Candice, then the two other slots are super flexible. Now, I highly recommend that you run uh, Elemental Mastery Raiden Shogun. That being said, you could replace Elemental Mastery Raiden Shogun, full EM Raiden, with something like full EM Kuki, or any other Electro unit that is flexible and can hit the Dendro cores consistently and build them at full EM in order to proc Hyper Bloom. So if you do replace uh, Raiden Shogun with someone like Kuki, as we have mentioned, uh, then in that case you can run another variation of the team where you remove Yao Yao and replace Yao Yao with a more offensive uh, Dendro support, something like either Dendro Traveler or you can also go with Nahida. And the team would pretty much function almost exactly the same. That being said, I think that personally, in my opinion, I think that Elemental Master Raiden is slightly better than Kuki in terms of uh, the damage potential that you can reach unless you're running Kuki on something like key of kajin's suit i believe that raiden shogun with uh, dragon's bane is going to do a little bit better now the fourth slot in assuming that you go with el haytham candace and raiden is going to be either yao yao or baiju because we want a dendro offfielder to apply deep wood as for candace herself you're going to build her as a sub dps you're going to build her with hp or er sands i highly recommend er and then you're going to build her with something like a crit rate, hydro damage bonus, and then the feather and the uh, flower are going to be always the same, but you can focus on stats such as crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and HP. As for the weapons, there are multiple weapon options that Candice can use. The catch is a good one, and in my opinion, the best one. That being said, if you have something else such as the Staff of Homa or the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, or the Staff of Scarlet Sands, they are all going to be good options. This team takes advantage of Candace's normal attack buff in order to increase El Haytham's normal attacks as he drives the team itself. In addition to Candace's AoE application, AoE Hydro application from her C6, which will allow her to do respectable damage, in addition to applying a consistent Hydro Aura on top of the enemies for El Haytham to create blooms, and then Raiden Shogun... Uh, to detonate those blooms into hyper blooms. Now, obviously, Sing Cho can you can replace Candace easily with someone like Sing Cho, right? But the issue with that is that Candace is really hot. Anyway, the issue with that is that Sing Cho is also a very valuable character. 
And if you're going to be using Sincho on your other teams, then this is just another option that you can run with Candice. In addition to, if you're someone who really likes Candice like me, then you can obviously build her and run her on this team, and she will do really well. And just like that, those were the five teams that I wanted to showcase. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you liked at least one of the teams. Uh, again, these are... They are fun teams. They are teams that you can try if you have time and resources. Uh, they will obviously clear Spiral Abyss, as you have seen in the showcases. Uh, but again, I do suggest that you build all of the characters, not like me, where my, uh, my both of my Candace and my Doria were basically on life support. Uh, but yeah, fun teams, you can try them. I'll probably be making more Alahatham content as uh, his banner approaches. Probably, maybe more team content, maybe more combo content, more rotations, maybe five tips. We'll see. But yeah, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video out of your busy day. And this music is really beautiful. But anyway, thank you very much. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next time.